Welcome to 15 Minute Theatre, the only review show that squeezes a whole production into 900 seconds. The date is Tuesday the 25th of February 2020 and we've just been to see Endgame. Open the house. Hello, Vicky. Hello, James. How are we today? All right, thanks. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Oh, how lovely. <laughs> um, so, we had a nice time at the theatre, didn't we? Oh, we had a lovely time. Do you know what? We? I love going to the Old Vic. It's a lovely place. I it? think it's one of my favourite theatre destinations. S- since they've improved the toilet situation, yeah. it is much better. Are they unisex now? Yeah, but one of them just has cubicles and one of them has urinals in it. So if all the ladies still go to the cubicle yeah. side and the guys and then, still go yeah. to... Because, I mean, they're unisex, but ladies can't use urinals unless they have a sheepy. I won't go into that now. Great. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so shall I give you some information about Endgame? Oh, please do. Okay, it was written by Samuel Beckett. Yes. It was directed by Richard Jones. Um, the set and costume were by Stuart Lang. Um, and there were only four actors, so I'm going to read them only all out. Only four actors? Um, I think you might have heard of some of these people. Really? Maybe. Alan Cumming. Is it Cummings? Yeah. Hadn't finished. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Daniel Radcliffe. Get out of town. Jane Horrocks. What? And Carl Johnson. What? Mm-hmm. Um, and it's at the Old Vic, as we've said, and it's running until March the 28th, 2020, and it's two hours and 15 minutes, including that all-important interval, although I think it's a little longer than that. Well, I'm not sure, but do you know, why is it two hours and 15 minutes? Because there are actually two plays. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> so the first is about half an hour long, and it was called Rough for Theatre Two. Yes. And then there was an, um, then there was an interval. Yep. And then we went in for Endgame. It was about an hour and a half, I reckon. Yeah. 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 Brilliant. So, Vicky, can you give us a little synopsis of both, please? It's quite hard, isn't it? Um, so. Why is it hard? Because th- there's not explicit sort of references to to. The scenarios, if that makes sense. So the first one is two people who are possibly deaf. Uh, there's, there's a man contemplating jumping from a window and they basically come in and sort of judge him, sum him up, look at his past, look at some letters that he's written. And I think they're deciding whether to let him jump or not, but it's never explicitly made clear. Yeah. Well, let's start with that one, shall we? Yes. And then we'll cut, we'll go, we'll go on to end game. Okay. Did you enjoy it? Yes. Yeah, me too. I liked it. I mean, the thing with I'd never seen uh, end game. I knew, I knew end game because we studied it when we were at university. We did, didn't we? Yeah. yeah. Uh, but I didn't know this other one, and it's very hard because it's so surreal. Yeah. That you're not you're you're trying to cling to a story, and there is kind of a story and. There is meaning there. I wouldn't say it's Dardarist. Yeah. There's a lot of... It's, he's into dialogue, isn't he, Beckett? Yeah. There's just a lot of talking. And I love... <laughs> I, I'm into dialogue. I like dialogue. You like dialogue? I do, I oh, do. That's good. So, um, it, it had a real... For me, it had a real re- resonance of, like, a Morecambe and Wise sketch. Yeah. One of them was sort of more into the other one. Yeah. Was trying to sit on his lap. The other one was interested. Yeah, which is quite funny. And there was this whole thing going on about the lights. Yeah. Going on and they on. They each had a desk with a light. Yeah. And How long did it take you to understand kind of what was going on? I'm not sure. It took me about half the play, I think, <laughs> to realise, oh, this man looks like he's about to jump. And oh, they're in death's waiting room or something. Yeah. But um, it kind of highlighted, you know, uh, what's it called? Red tape. And all, you know, living in a society where everything has to be recorded, written down three times yeah. in triplicate and all that kind of stuff, which I thought was interesting. It was good. I enjoyed it. Um, what about <laughs> the set? The set, well, obviously it was sort of in, it was right at the front of the stage because it was, I guess, in in front of the set behind it. I don't really understand how they did it. Well, they moved it forward, didn't yeah, they? they? I think they moved it. both of them forward. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, But you Uh, kind of embarrassed yourself a bit, didn't you? Because Well, you thought that the man who was going to jump was actually a real man. He looked like a real man, didn't he? I know, but there was no way he could have stood like that for half an hour. He must have been quite in pain. Um, 
so there was a man standing in a window uh, and then there was a room it just had two desks with lamps on and a birdcage and that was about it really wasn't it yeah I can't remember what they were wearing because it was suits weren't they yeah I think so it's a couple of don't remember what they were wearing for that bit I remember the second one anyway um I think that's all we really have to say about that one. Yeah, it was good though, I enjoyed it. Yeah, I enjoyed it a lot. And then, obviously, we had the interval, and we came back for Endgame. Yes. Uh, what did you think? I have seen this before. I saw it with Michael Gambon. Ah, I think uh, it's pronounced Jambon. Jambon, Michael Jambon. Um, so am I giving you a synopsis? Is that what I'm doing? Yes, I've please. I've got a bit off track in my oh, yeah. brain then. Um, so Endgame, basically, is set in a post-apocalyptic world. Yes where um, the... I can't remember all their names. The, the main guy... Is it Ham and Clegg? Ham and Cl- Clove. Oh, so the main guy's Ham. So Ham has a house, and he invited a man and his son to come and live with him because they had no food and they were starving, and he had this house and had some food. So the, the man is now no longer with us, but his son, Clove, now works for Ham... Kind of like a manservant. Yeah, so Ham is in a wheelchair and can't go anywhere. Clove can walk, but with difficulty. But he basically looks after everyone. And then he has his two parents <laughs> are, are in dustbins. Uh, yeah. <laughs> which is never... You never Explained. know why. Although they kind of went into a, a little detail about how they lost their legs and stuff and things like that. But I don't think that's the reason why to put them in yeah. the dustbins. Um, so they're in the same... So it's all based in one room. Uh, Ham's sort of sitting there in his wheelchair. Parents in uh, the dustbins. They pop up yeah. a little bit, and Clove sort of basically goes in between that room and the kitchen. Yeah. Uh, and they have sort of quite fractious relationships. So what what I love about that Beckett is it, although it seems like a bit of nonsense, there's enough there to allow you to link and try and make sense of it. So for me, the parents. I kind of they're in the dustbins because you know they're they're from the the past of society. There's no use for them anymore, and yeah. you know they're on their way out. Uh, and you know, uh, I just really enjoy it. I really enjoyed it a lot. Yeah, they're all sort of stuck in their own worlds, aren't they? And they can't go anywhere, and and they do the same things every day. And yeah, and it's a ham is very needy. Yeah, he he has he's constantly needs attention and won't let Clove sort of go and do his business. And Clove doesn't want to be there; he's fed up. Yeah, um, it's just it's just again, it's the dialogue is so clever, it's so well written. Yeah, and I was surprised at Daniel Radcliffe. Alan Cummings was absolutely brilliant. Yeah, I mean, the, this, I think he stole the show. This is a funny play. Yeah, it, it is funny, and I think he made it particularly funny the way he played. Yeah, it. I think the way it was staged and the way yeah. they performed it was brilliant. I mean, hats off as well to Daniel Radcliffe. Um, yeah, I was amazed. I have never thought of him as being able to do physical comedy. But it's quite a physical role, wasn't it? And he actually was really good. It was really good. Yeah, and, and I, you know, it it just shows what I think what a versatile actor he was. I, you know, because I don't. Mm, I don't want to start well, slagging not... off Harry Potter, but he's not my Harry Potter. Is he not? Is uh, your Harry Potter? He just, I don't know. He just never really clicked for is me. It, is it uh, Kay Harker? <laughs> is he your Harry Potter? <laughs> I don't know who my Harry Potter is. <laughs> but oh. uh, I was really genuinely... That's controversial. I, I know, but I was really genuinely quite <laughs> surprised at yeah. how good he was. Yeah, but I like to say, I think Alan Cummings uh, stole the show. Oh, he now, was brilliant. And the, and the parents were great. Now let's talk about the parents. I did not know that was Jane Horrocks. Yeah, she's made up to look quite old, isn't she? Yeah, and it's only like a ten minute performance, really. She's only in she's, one scene. She's in one she? scene. She's on the stage, yeah, for maybe like ten minutes. Yeah, that's good, That's good, isn't it? I like, know. I wonder how much she's getting for that. I know. Uh, <laughs> and the other guy, I have recently been watching Mum on the BBC iPlayer, and he's in that. He's, oh, right. He's brilliant in it. And... Uh, yeah, he was really good. They were, it, everyone was really well cast. Yeah, it was it was a very enjoyable. So um, the staging for that it was like uh, you kind of said it was like a living room, but that they had two windows which were quite. So high they were up. underground. They were in a basement. Right. So the windows, I guess, would have been at like sort of street level. But you so, had this stepladder where it was like yeah. tumbling up, and he had a particular way of coming down it. And yeah, so Clove had to move the stepladder to look out the windows. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It was great. Yeah. All right. Um, anything else? Any standout moments for you? Well, 
mean, it was almost like one long, one scene. So yeah. it's sort of hard to have a standout moment. Yeah, I, I, How about you? No, I feel exactly the same. I think there was a bit where Alan Cummings was on his own on the stage giving a bit of a monologue. Yeah. I can't quite remember what it was about, but I, I remember really enjoying that bit. Yeah. Uh, but... I quite like the dog. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll leave that as a little surprise. <laughs> all right, so shall we take a break and come back and score this baby? I need a break after all that. Ooh. All right, so audience antics. Well, we've discussed the new toilets. Well, what I've realised is sometimes when you get the cheap seats, yeah. that you also get the school... Oh uh, yeah, it was your second time it's happened, tonight it? again. I saw your face drop as there the children of, came in. There were so many teenagers in there, and I was a bit concerned. Because you were a bit like the child catcher from Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, weren't you? But actually, they were really quiet. Weren't yeah, they? they were really good. Yeah. And uh, except for that massive teenager. Oh, there was a big one. Yeah, and then he came and sat behind us, didn't he? For a bit, and just yeah. on, kicking my chair annoyed me. But that was only in the interval, so yeah, I let but that, that go. Was all right. Yeah, uh, but no, they were really well behaved. Um, yeah, it was. I've got nothing to complain about. Really. Good theatre, good, and and even those seats. Um, yeah, we got really good. cheap, like twelve pound seats. But you could you could see it, and they were comfortable. More, oh, kind of. Your feet. I was not comfortable. The, your feet didn't touch the ground, did they? <laughs> and also, where they put the dustbins, they were right at the front of the stage, and they were low down. I found it really difficult to see them. Yeah, I had see, to really I've got lean a bit over. more height than you. So yeah, I was all right with that. All right. I think we'd better score this baby. Okay. All right, so, Vicky, performances. I'm going to say ten. <gasps> because oh. Alan Cummings was so fantastic. I've never seen him in anything before, and I would definitely, definitely, definitely go and see him in something again. Okay, I'm also going to give it ten. Ooh. Yeah, really, really enjoyed it. Yeah. Um, okay, Sajan and Technical, I'm going to give it a ten. I thought they used the stage really well. I thought the whole physicality and stuff was great. The thing is, it was very simple, but I don't really know what else you could have done with it. Mm. Mm, okay, I'll go for ten. I think the reason I'm giving it a ten is that you didn't. It, it, we weren't bored. There wasn't like you were craving for something else to look at or something to do. I cause... don't feel like I can take points off it. Yeah, narrative and plot. I'm going for a nine. Okay. Oh no, I really like Samuel Beckett. Well, but um, okay, pl- yeah, okay. No, I'm going. For I a love nine. Samuel Beckett, but I'm going to give it an eight. Oh. Yeah. Maybe I'm wrong. Because it doesn't make sense. Yeah, kind of, but then it does make sense. You know what, I'm going to change it, I'm going to give it a nine, because I really, really like yeah. it. Yeah. Right, originality gets a ten from me. Yeah, well, see, because I've seen it before. Okay. But they played... Was it very different? Yeah, it was. Was they it played... very original? <laughs> they played the Alan Cummings part quite differently. Okay. I'm going to give it a nine. All right. Uh, costume. Um... The I cost- love what they did with Alan Cummings' costume. Yeah, oh my gosh, his legs are so thin. Yeah. <laughs> um, it gets, gets a nine for me. I can't really criticise it. I'll go for a nine as well. And was it worth it? It's a big fat ten for ten me. Ten for me. Wowzers. Ten for okay. me. Good Woo-hoo. scorings. Okay, so while I add up these scores, do you want to tell the listener what we're going to see next? Yeah, we are going to see City of Angels. And I can't actually remember anything about it or why we booked it. Do you remember anything about it or why we booked it? Uh, no. So it's going to be a nice surprise. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, I did look online the other day, actually, and it's won loads of prizes in, across the water That's in it. America. Th- th- so there must have been a reason why we booked it. I think that was the reason. Was it? I think so. I don't know. Uh, anyway. So who knows? It, but what, what? Uh, hopefully it's going to be great. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> City right. of Angels play London. Uh, it's the Don Mars, Olivia Award winning production of City Angels has moved to the West End. Oh, it's because it's from the Don Mars and we love the Don Mars. We do love the Don Mars. That's Mar. probably why we've booked it, isn't it? Yeah. Right, I've done it. Well, just in time. Right. Okay, so it gets a star rating of 4.8. Oh, that's good, isn't it? Very good. Which places it. At the top of the leaderboard. Yes. So above the joint uh, lower places of the process and yeah. Central Talks of International Trevor. I should say that unfortunately, <laughs> due to some 
uh, technical difficulties. Technical difficulties. <laughs> we've actually Can't. had to miss the last four plays we were supposed to go to. We see. haven't missed four, have we? Oh no, I, did I go and see one? No. Wow. We've missed. We've, Not four. We've missed. We missed dear Evan Hans, Evan Hansen. Oh. We missed. Um, we were able to change the death of England, which I was really upset wow. about. Um, we've missed at least one more. Okay. I feel like we've missed four. We're going to try and see Dear Evan Hansen, aren't we, if we can? Yes, because I hear it's very good. Yeah, uh, but that's one of those things. Yep. And this is another one of those things. It's a theatre bell, which no. means we're out of time. Okay, well, that's a shame. So, thanks for listening. Thanks, thanks for coming. The curtain's down, the theatre's dark, and that was 15 Minute Theatre. Good night. Good night. <laughs>